Hey, my name is Samantha, and today we're going to be going over Night Dialer, which is a question featured in the Bloomberg, Amazon, and Google packages. Um, it's pretty wordy, there's a lot of diagrams, but hopefully after this video, it will be pretty simple to you. But basically, you are given um, a number, which is the number of digits that you would like, and you have to return the number of unique phone numbers of size N that you can make. And you're given a couple of requirements or parameters. One of these is that you can only make movements that mimic that of a knight in chess. And what that is, is you go one direction, either two or one, and whatever is your next direction has to be perpendicular in the opposite of the two or one. So it's combinations are two, of two and one and both movements have to be perpendicular to each other. So a knight can go up two and then to the right or left one, or it can go down two and then to the left or right one. It can also go up one, right two, up one, left two, and so on. So it's a, it makes an L of a combination of two and one, two and one. And so we are given this key keypad and the red indicate that we cannot land on those keys and basically everything that we do has to be in the same movement of a knight. So if we were to start on key zero, what are the options that we can, where are the next keys that we can go to? If we start on the zero, we can only then get to the four or the six. If we start on the one, we can only get to the eight or the six. And so on. So I kind of already drew that out in this map where the key is our current key and our value is the options of where we can go if we are on that key. And then as you can tell, there's no five in here. That's because if we're looking at this, the we can't get anywhere from the five. We can get to the red keys, which are not allowed, and then nowhere else. So that's that. And then... Just to look at the examples really quickly, if n is 1, um, our output is 10. So automatically that's a base case. And the reason that that is our base case is because we're not doing any movements. If we have 10 keys available of possible numbers and our, num our phone number length can only be 1, then that's just all of the numbers that we have added up. So we have one possibility from the one, one possibility from the two, one possibility from the three, one possibility from the four, and so on. And so if we only have a phone number length of one, what are the possible phone numbers that we can have? One through nine, or zero through nine. The next thing that we should look at is example two. So when n is two, there are 20 possibilities of phone, like phone numbers that we can create. And they get that, you can kind of see through this map that's created. And this is because if we start on the zero, we can either go to the four, and that makes a length of two. So we'll have the zero four, as you can see here, or we have the zero six. So we get two possibilities if we start at zero. And then if we start on the one, and we're that counts as one of our digits already, and then so we're allowed to move one more time, we can go to the six or the eight. So that's how it gets one, six, one, eight, and so on. So basically all of these numbers get added up. So we have two here, two from here, two, 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 three, three, two, 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 whatever. And that equals 20. And so that's how they get that answer. And to really conceptualize this question, I think it's important to go up to N equals three, which is what we are going to do here. And so I'm going to go ahead and just fill this in. Um, as we saw earlier, so we know that if we're at zero and our N is two, then there are two possibilities that we can, you know, make a unique number. It's the zero, four, zero, six. Same goes for here, 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 the four, we have three possibilities. If we start on the four and we have a length of two, we can get the four, zero, four, three, four, nine, five doesn't have anything. This has three, two, two. Two. And so what's important about this question is that we cannot get to 
find out what the solution for n equals 5, for example, without knowing what it was for n equals 4. We need to keep track of every single uh, like possible um, value at the step prior in order to solve this. So, okay, let's go through n equals 3. So if we start, let's just visualize this out first. If we start on 0, and we know that we can go three steps, that means, okay, we have... We can go zero, four, and then at the four, we have one more step that we can go. So we can go back to the zero, or we can go zero, four, and then three, or we can go zero, four, nine. And that's only the combinations that we have when we go zero, four. What about when we go zero, six? Then we have zero, six, and then we look through the six, what are the possibilities that we can go once we're there? Oh, we can go back to the zero. We can go zero, six, one, and we can go zero, six, seven. So what we're doing is we're starting at this key and then for each value in this key, we're looking at the number of values that that key has because that shows us how many operations we can have. And so when we are actually at zero, and we're allowed three digits, what do we do? Well, we know that the answer is six because we just solved it right here. But we're going to say four, so we're on zero. For, so for each value in this um, key, which is four and six, we're going to say how many possibilities did four have? Oh, okay, so we have a three from there and now we're gonna go to the six and we're gonna say how many possibilities did that six have? The six had three, so three plus three is six and that's gonna be our answer. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the one. One, in order to get what this is, we're gonna say how many possibilities did we have when we look at the previous vector at six and eight? Well, six and eight is three plus two, we have five. And that makes sense because if we can go from the one to the six, and now we have one move left, there's three possibilities here. And then if we go one to the eight, and now we have one step left, there's two possibilities here. And so we just keep referencing our math, going through it, and just seeing what the previous vector was. And now at this point that our n is three, this vector doesn't mean anything to us anymore. Um, it didn't mean anything to us in this in this drawing example, but you'll see in a minute um, when we code why it needs to be there. But so we get six, five, and then for the two, we reference the seven and the nine, which gives us four. And then we look at the four and the eight, which gives us five. This is gonna remain zero and so on. So by the end of this, it gets 46. And if you wanna keep going through this, um, we look at the zero, the three, the nine, which is six for the four. 0, 1, 7, which is 6. Um, this can get a little bit quick, so if you want to do it out, I highly recommend doing that. I think this is a 5. And the 9, we look at the 2 and the 4, which is 5. Something like that. I may have gone fast, but that's the gist. And so when we code this out, we obviously return 1. Um, I mean, we return 10 if our size is 1. But we need to have this vector that we're going to like reference, which is going to hold all of the previous iterations values. So let's call it V and it's going to have a size of 10. And initially it's going to have all ones in it. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through and we're going to start on two because we kind of already know kind of in here, like we, st I started showing you the algorithm when n is two. We don't need to calculate when n is one because we know that the answer is 10. And this V that I just did out um, coding wise is this. When n is one, we know that each possible value that we can get, to, it just has one possible phone number. And so we're gonna say I less than or equal to n, I plus plus. And so what are we doing? Each time we're gonna create a new vector and we're gonna call it temp and that also needs to have a size of 10. And basically this temp is this vector that we create each time. And so we're gonna say for all, so this is how you iterate through a map, for auto key value pair of the map. 
And now we want to say, if we're at zero, now we want to get every single key and reference that. So we're going to say for auto j of value, because value is a vector, as we can see. Then we're going to say temp at key, which is where we would start. So say zero is equal to temp at key plus v at j. And so what that is saying is temp at key, so in this case, when we did the six, when we originally go from the zero to the four and we see that it's a three, okay, yay, we're gonna add it to this vector. But when we come across the six, we want it to be the three and the three added up. So that's where we're doing plus equals itself, plus whatever value exists at our, our, like our memoized vector. Um, and then just one thing that I know it's going to complain about. Um, so this is basically how you do it. And we're going to have to mod. It asks us to return the answer that way. So I'm just doing that. But that's really not important to conceptualizing how this question works. And so this fills it. And then every time we just want to update that V is equal to temp. So now if we were to go through and calculate N is 4, we're going to reference this vector, not these two. They don't matter anymore. So at any time, we just need to have two vectors in order to solve this problem where they're constantly being updated. And so from there, we have an int ands, and we just, at this point, just go through our v vector, and we say ands is equal to ands. Again, this is like a mod thing. And then return ands. And that is how you solve this problem. Um, basically, this is memoization. You have to just keep building up off of the previous one. This mod thing, I don't think you should worry about it too much. It's just given in the, in the question, so that's why I did it. Um, and then our complexity... You might think, oh, three, four loops, except this map is of constant space. It's like when you iterate through a vector that you know the size. So our complexity is truly O of N, where N is the number of, N is what is sent in. Yeah, and if we submit this, <laughs> accepted. That is how you do night problem. Night dialer. Thanks for watching.